Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, this is Jian Pang from URUC, and uh, I'm going to present our work, uh, Graph Descent towards Rousing Difference Principle on Graph Convolutional Network. And uh, this is a joint work with Dr. Yan Zhu and Dr. Yong Xia from Meta AI and uh, Dr. Jie Bo Luo from uh, University of Rochester and uh, Dr. Han Tong from URUC. So, so uh, let's start with a common observation that the graphs of networks are very common in many applications, like the social network analysis and drug discoveries, uh, recommendations, traffic predictions, and many more. Uh, so, and also please note that for the purpose of the presentations, we will use the term graph and network interchangeably. And uh, to discover the useful information inside this, uh, inside the very ubiquitous graph structure data, a very trending uh, technique is the graph convolutional network, uh, which learns the node representations by aggregating the uh, information from its local neighborhood. And mathematically, this uh, graph convolutional operations can be represented as this matrix multiplication, uh, where we have the renormalized graph Laplacian A hat and the current uh, node representations, and also the model with W. But actually a bad thing about the GCN model is that it often has a biased performance with respect to the node degree, where a low degree nodes often have a, a low predictive accuracy and a higher loss than those of the high degree nodes. And for example, in this toy example, so we have a GCN-based recommender system that provides, and the, this system can provide a very high quality uh, recommendation to this uh, uh, high degree nodes in the middle, but uh, it will also provide some uh, irrelevant recommendation to this uh, grassroots uh, players in the uh, low degree grassroots players. And what is worse is that the node degree uh, in real world graphs often have a, a long tail distribution, meaning that it can achieve a very good empirical performance by uh, benefiting only a few fraction of the high degree nodes, but overlooking the uh, performance on a, lar a relatively large uh, fraction of the low degree nodes, for example, the grassroots players in the previous examples. And uh, luckily, uh, there has been some uh, works trying to mitigate this degree-related unfairness. And uh, the common goal of this uh, 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 prior works is to learn the degree-related information. And uh, some typical examples include the uh, degree-specific weight by the demo net or the neighborhood translation mechanism by the TLGN. But it should be noted that this method either introduced the additional learnable parameters or additional uh, adding the additional components to the vanilla GCN architectures. And both of these uh, limitations could cause a, uh, would, would cause a much more uh, computational resources for the model deployment. So in this work, what we want to answer is that how can we mitigate this degree and uh, degree related unfairness without hurting the scalability of the GCN and also changing the uh, GCN architecture. So different from the previous work that learned the additional degree related information, we view this unfairness as the uh, unfair, uh, unfair allocation of the utilities where the resource to allocate is the utility of the uh, GCN model. And what we want is to find a fair allocation of the utility. And for example, uh, originally we may have some uh, unfair allocation of the utilities like shown by these black bars. And what we really want is that after the debiasing, we want the allocations to be fair, which is uh, shown by these orange bars. And uh, let's uh, illustrate this uh, intuition with the toy example again. So what we want to make sure is that after the debiasing, uh, we want to make sure the system can provide this, uh, some high quality recommendation to this uh, uh, grassroots players, while also uh, keep, the, keep a very good performance on the celebra celebrities in, this, uh, in the middle of this, uh, in the middle of this uh, uh, graph. 
And based on the intuition of this uh, resource allocations and the specific setting of our problem is here. So given the graph, the GCN and the loss function, and we want to find a well-trained GCN such that it can minimize the loss function and also achieves a fair allocation also uh, of the utility. But a key question we want to answer here is when do we, uh, when do we have such a fair allocation of the utility? And to find this uh, fair allocation of utility, uh, we resort to the Rousey indifference principle, which is designed to find a just allocation of social welfare to achieve this, uh, to achieve the fairness. And here we can treat the utility as the welfare we want to allocate, and the least fortunate group in the uh, in this uh, in the graph is the graph uh, is the group of nodes with the worst utility. And in order to enforce the Rousey indifference principle, we aim to understand the stability of this principle. So to achieve this uh, stability, a uh, natural way is to keep improving the utility of the least fortunate group. And then we can achieve the stability as long as there is no least fortunate group, which means that all the groups in this graph will have a balanced utility. But however, many utility measures like the classification, uh, classification accuracy or the F1 scores, they are not differentiable. And thus it may not uh, fit into the end-to-end -end training paradigm of GCN. So we use the, uh, in this work, we use the uh, loss function as the proxy measure of the utility because we often minimize the loss function in order to maximize the utility. And then our goal becomes to the balance in the loss of the nodes with different degrees. And with the motivation of uh, enforcing this uh, Rousey indifference principles, in the next part, I will present our analysis on why the allocation will be unfair in GCM model. So the intuition of our analysis is to understand why the loss would vary after we train the model. And it should be noted that a key component for this uh, model training is the gradient with respect to the model parameters. So what we would like to answer is uh, whether the unfairness is rooted in the gradient of the model parameters. And actually our results show that the gradient with respect to the model, uh, uh, the weight parameters in a graph convolution layer can be actually written as this, uh, the matrix uh, multiplication between these uh, three matrices. And with some mathematical uh, derivations, then the gradient can be further rewritten as these two different for, uh, formulations and each of which will correspond to the a linear combination of the node influence weighted by the node degree in the renormalized graph Laplacian. And in terms of the first formulation here, the linear coefficients here actually correspond to the column sum of this yellow matrix. And also the influence, node influence can be uh, calculated in this, uh, in this specific way. And uh, similarly for the second formulations, the linear, uh, the linear coefficient correspond to the row sum of this yellow matrix. And we can also uh, calculate the node influence using this way. So as a short summary, then if we view this uh, gradient from the perspective of the linear combination, uh, we can see that actually the node influence uh, gives us the direction of the gradient update. And then the node degree is the important of that. Uh, it's the importance of these uh, directions. But actually, uh, we may wonder things like, okay, now we have already done some uh, symmetric normalizations on the graph to obtain this uh, renormalized graph Laplacian, then why does the node degree still vary after the normalization? So in fact, uh, this uh, symmetric normalization is normalizing the uh, largest eigenvalue of the matrix instead of the degree of the of the nodes. And also in many real world graphs, uh, there, is, uh, there is a clear positive correlation between the uh, node degree in the original graph and the node degree in this A hat, meaning that a high degree nodes in the original graph will likely to have a high degree in this uh, renormalized graph Laplacian as well. And thus, uh, with, with this observation, the gradient is still biased with respect to the node degree. 
for example, let's see this uh, simple toy examples. Then if the node degree does not take any uh, effect on the gradient, uh, on the gradient computation, then we may want to update the model parameters through this direction that benefit both nodes equally. But if we consider node, node degrees, then we can say that the we can see that the direction is actually rotated towards this high degree nodes, and thus it will benefit this high degree nodes as a result. So in order to mitigate the impact of the node degree in the, uh, in the gradient computation, we want to make sure that the sum and the sum of each row and each column in this uh, A hat matrix is a constant. And this uh, intuition naturally leads to the W stochastic matrix, meaning that the sum of all the rows and all the columns are one. And to compute this W stochastic matrix, we use the sinkhorn knob algorithm to, uh, to calculate it, which provides a very nice uh, theoretical guarantee on the convergence of this algorithm. And uh, luckily in our paper, we have also proved that for this specific renormalized graph Laplacian A hat, we can always find the unique W stochastic matrix uh, using the sinkhorn knob algorithm. And based on our findings about the source of this unfairness, and in the next part, I will present our method named the Ross GCN to mitigate such uh, unfairness. So uh, our Ross GCN is developed on the basis of this uh, gradient computation. So as mentioned in our previous analysis, we we will need to apply the W stochastic normalization in order to mitigate the impact of the node, node degree. And then guided by this uh, gradient, fair gradient computation, then we can actually use two different strategies to mitigate the unfairness, namely a pre-processing method called ross JSON graph and the in-processing method called ross JSON graph. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, pre-processing uh, method Ross JSON graph first. So the key idea here is to first normalize the, uh, the A hat into its doubly stochastic format. And then we feed this doubly stochastic matrix as the input of the GCN. And then we can just train the GCN as how it should, how it should be trained. And in terms of the in-processing method Ross JSON graph, so we will first uh, compute the W stochastic matrix uh, using the sinkhorn knob algorithm, but during but as the model input, we will still use the original uh, renormalized graph Laplacian. But the difference is that uh, during the back propagations, we will use this W stochastic matrix to calculate a fair gradient, and then back propagate this fair gradient in the model for the uh, for the uh, to update the parameters. And next, we will show some experimental results about the effectiveness and the efficiency of our method. So we test our mes uh, proposed method in semi-supervised node classification on several real-world graphs. And we compare our method with uh, six baseline methods. And in the experiments, we will measure the uh, utility as the classification accuracy, and also uh, measure the bias as the variance of the loss functions which is consistent with our problem formulations. And from the effectiveness results, we can see that the Ross JSON actually achieved the smallest bias. And interestingly, we can see that by mitigating the bias, we can sometimes improve the classification accuracy significantly. And we believe that a possible reason is after the bias mitigation, the model can achieve a higher accuracy for the low degree nodes and thus improving the overall classification accuracy. And from this visualization, we can also find out that our model achieve a more balanced performance because we have a much flatter uh, slope in the regression lines. And in terms of the efficiency of our Ross GCN family, we can find out that they have the same memory cost as the GCN and a much shorter training time compared with all the baseline methods. And from the ablation study, we can see that actually our choice of double stochastic normalization is the best choice to balance the accuracy and the fairness. And finally, we will conclude the paper. So in this paper, uh, in order to mitigate the degree related unfairness, 
We studied how to enforce the Rousing Difference Principle on GCN. And we studied the source of unfairness by analyzing the gradient with respect to the model parameters, which naturally leads to the computation of the doubly stochastic graph. And based on this finding, well, we propose a pre-processing method named the Ross JSON graph and an in-processing method named the Ross JSON graph. And the experimental results show the effectiveness and the efficiency of our method compared with all the baseline method. And if you are interested in our papers, so uh, please feel free to check out more details in the papers or contact me using the contact information at the bottom. And thank you. I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Jan, for keeping the time. Uh, we are indeed able to take a couple of questions. Well, maybe let me ask a question uh, in that case. Uh, oh. In my experience, like personal experience, uh, nodes with low degrees are kind of sometimes indeed like poorly represented, but sometimes they are just um, affected by noise or are actual noise in the data. Um, how do you know that uh, you know you're doing something uh, useful for the this underrepresented nodes versus ones that are just pure noise? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. So, uh, in terms of the noise. I think it actually um, relates to another field of study on the uncertainty quantification. So uh, where we want to quantify the uncertainty of the nodes. And uh, yeah, but of course, this is not the scope of, the, of our papers. So here in our paper, our assumption is that okay, the observed graph is, is certain. We, we, we don't assume there is a noise or something. But actually, I believe that the uncertainty, quantifying the uncertainty of the low degree nodes can help improve the, the, the classification performance as well. And in fact, we, we, we have some sub work in submission that deal with this uh, uncertainty of the nodes. And the results actually shows that uh, using, by, by, by taking care of the node uncertainty, we can, also improve the uh, classification accuracy. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, and with that, I, I, we... excuse me, uh, I have a follow-up question. Um, so, uh, uh, when you, uh, uh, I mean, when you try to have such balance, so you you try to uh, uh, also represent the uh, the low degree nodes. Um, just a question that uh, like uh, i have a question if that's actually what we want because uh it, it might it might be the a case in the in a, in a graph that uh, actually it, it, it's a, it's a signal in itself that you have a high degree node and low degree node and you don't want it to mix that up you don't want uh, to to lose this difference between them uh so i'm not sure if we if we want actually to represent them all equally uh, in all cases. Yeah, so actually for here, uh, we mean the balance as the balance of the utilities. So mm. it doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, the, the high degree nodes and low degree nodes, they will have a very uh, similar uh, representations. So I think that's a, that's a, but the, the problem you raise is a, good uh, problem as well, but um, I think this is not the scope of a paper. So we want to have a balanced utilities. So think of uh, ourselves as a as, as some users. So for example, we, we are using the Instagram and then, but we just like casually view the, in, the feed of the Instagram. And then as a very casual user, we don't want the, we don't want the system to provide us many irrelevant recommendations, right? But this is actually what we often observe in reality. But in this case, if, if this low degree users will, will receive a very bad user experience, then the users may leave the system or maybe 
not just the casual users, it may, it may be some new users and then it will, it will leave the system and then the system will have less and less training data. And then as a result, the system will be more biased towards those, those uh, celebrities. And in this case, then your, your system will not provide a very good user experience as well. 